Imagine we live in a world where restaurants still take reservation by phone. So open table doesn't exist in this world. Okay. Um, and we want to move this online. So instead of calling in, a customer goes to a website, enters their info, and books a reservation that way. So our system would replace the entire process of making, taking, and keeping reservations with minimal human input. Right. So reservation booking system for restaurants, minimal human input. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'll start off with some expectations that I might have. So let me say future expectations. And the first one is users want to, I guess let me break it down further. Let's say use cases. And use cases is one or multiple people want to book a single reservation. Okay. One or multiple people want to book a single reservation. Do we support group bulk reservations like if a company wants to do an on-site? Um, for the MVP, we don't have to worry about that. Good okay. question, though. All right, so I'll do it one or multiple. Want to do a single um, minimal human inputs. Can we, let's dig on, dig into that to see what that means. So minimal human inputs. Does that mean... It's the functions we want to support are create reservation, edit rid reservation, and delete reservation. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable from a customer perspective. Yeah, reservation, yeah. edit reservation, and delete reservation. And these functions seem pretty minimal for the most part in terms of what a human would need to do. So someone for create would have to enter details. Edit mm -hmm. reservation is look up existing reservation via some ID. We'll get into what that will be in the system and then edit details. And then similarly for delete reservation, we want to look up. Let me just copy these. Okay, this one, so delete, we're going to look up existing reservation by some ID and then delete reservation. So yep. how does that look for a minimal human input? Yeah, and, and thinking from the client side, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The, uh, the, other, the other side is um, the, the problem with the phone system is uh, somebody has to be on the other end, yeah. and then there's a lot more human interaction required to make a reservation uh, in, the, in the system we're replacing. Yeah. So we want to make sure like, the folks on the other end uh, don't have to do that. Yeah. yeah. So on that note, platforms are unsupported. Do we want it to be there's in-person, they come in and ask for a reservation, there's via phone, and there's an online um, portal. What do we want to support for the MVP? Yeah, for the MVP, we could we could assume our online portal that we're creating okay. will be the source of truth for the bookings. So, like this restaurant is going to be, um, okay. hey, I'd like to use you as my reservation system. This will be the source of truth. Yeah. Uh, so, if somebody came in or somebody called in or somebody went online, it should all kind of go to the okay. same source of truth. For I ask yeah. because even though it's an MVP, if we almost common create a exactly. choose. So, yeah, so we're going for the online thing. Yep. So that's a pro for say, no, for synchronous scheduling. All right, so platform supported. Okay. As for the client, I assume they can use the online portal both via web, mobile, doesn't matter. Yeah. Any client device. All right. And what else is important to know? So for who will use it, I guess for an MVP, we're going to just say people. It doesn't matter if it's an exact, low level, doesn't matter who. And mm -hmm. uh, let's look on the how many. So how many customers are there? So let's get to some estimations. So number of users slash customers, since it's a restaurant. What else do I need to know? Number of, I guess, support staff. That's sorry. This one is, let's say, less um, lower priority. So I might not dig into that too much. So number of users, customers, number of reservations. Or let's say we don't care too much about the average since we want to know what the system can handle. So we'd say the max number, so not the worst case scenario. So let's say max number of reservations per day. Um, also, number of users slash customers, number of reservations per day. And I assume we don't have to worry about hardware. I mean, in-person concerns, like how many people the restaurant can support. We don't have to worry about that. We just focus on the software side. Yeah, but I think the software. Some constraints. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I think that your software will care about yeah. the constraints of the restaurant. So, it's, you know, overbook yeah. a restaurant. Yeah, given guys, uh, what's the term? Max occupancy. That's why a lot of restaurants have that. They have a sign that would say. Yeah, yeah max occupancy for sure. Yeah. Max occupancy, let's say per site. Because I know some restaurants can have sites in multiple locations, but we're going to say specific to location because we're only booking from one location. That's yeah. The location. Um, so max occupancy per site is a constraint. Um, number of people per table. Is that a constraint? Uh, yeah, I would think the table configuration might be a constraint because yeah. you know, some, some restaurants might have like a two seater table, yeah, four seater exactly. table, eight seater table. So you might have like multiple different types of tables to support. Yeah. Okay. So max some of that. And that um i guess for one last thing i'll talk about usage patterns i'm sure we could go on and on but i want to stay mm -hmm. on track for time so usage sure. patterns. so i guess this is like is traffic evenly distributed or not so let's say traffic fluctuations i imagine with a restaurant we're going to want to handle cases where there's high traffic which is typically in the evenings so mm -hmm. when does um traffic spike and well i know it's busy most restaurants are most busy in the evening but i don't know if that's when the reservation system is most busy because that's probably spread throughout. So I'll take that into account as well. When does traffic yeah. spike, let's say in restaurant versus on booking site? Because it matters in restaurant if someone wants to make a last minute booking versus mm -hmm. if they're just doing it throughout the day. So mm -hmm. for now, yeah. this seems pretty standard. So let me try and add some numbers. So for number of users, customers per day, um, let's say an average restaurant's max occupancy size is, let's say 70 people. How does that sound? 
Yeah, it just depends on the restaurant. But yeah. sure, we can do a hypothetical and like okay. the restaurant we can figure this. So maybe just putting down numbers for okay. some examples. So yeah. how many people, let's say the number of seats per table, say four seats per table. Um, number of users as customers per day. Uh, if we have 70, let's say every hour, people take about two hours to eat. Yeah, actually, let me put that down. Let's say average duration of stay, and I'll say two hours for that. And this will be important when we get talk, talk, start talking about that database and whether we want to cache something and how long we want to store that data for. So it's important to know the average stay. So two hours, average stay, number of users, or number of customers per day. So if it's two hours, let's say 70, we're not going to get max occupants all the time. So we'll say an average is like 50 on average. So for every two hours, it's open from full per day, maximum reservations per day. So for 30 per day, let's say each person. So each person won't make a reservation. If you have a group of like, we say each table is four seats. So it's one reservation per table. So if we have four people on average per table, that'd be 300 divided by four. So that would be about 70. So let's say, let's bump it up, 80 reservations per day. 80 reservations per day. And okay, so this looks good for now. We can come back and add more details, but for the sake of the actual system design, I'll start into the meat of things. So let's start with a high level design. So high level design. So bear with me a bit. I have not used Google Docs for high system design. Yeah, don't even, don't even draw. I would, okay. I would say like, it's just a waste of time to draw, but yes. you can just sketch out uh, okay. like what you think. You want to start with the UX or the, the sure. client side or whatever, just describe it. You know, okay. Drawing it is terrible on Google Docs. Okay. Yeah. For sure. So <laughs> starting off, we're going to have some clients. And like we said, it's going to be mobile slash web slash whatever clients we support. And that will go to some, down to some server. And I would say mm -hmm. it's a web server. And this web server will go down to some, will go over to some, I guess we're going to call it the reservation service, a reservation API. And let me put API methods somewhere. We're going to support API methods just so we know what other services it's going to support. So primarily, we have a create reservation. And this will take in some name. I'll specify the types later when I get to the database. So it takes in some name, takes in some size. We need to know how many people the reservation is for. Time, so let's say date time. Date time, so name, size, date time. What else do they ask? There's stuff like email and stuff, so I'll say meta info. I'll fill it out later. But there's like yeah. phone number, email, you can come to that later. So the create reservations one, then we want edit reservation. And this create reservation is going to create some reservation ID as a result. And that's what I'm going to use to fetch existing reservations when I get to edit reservation. But this is going to need a reservation ID. And let's say I'll come back to what details is, but that's what we need to edit. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then delete reservation. And again, this takes in just a reservation ID. And this will just return some status code to say if the deletion was successful or failed. So success slash failed. All right, so those are the methods. So my reservation API, I'm going to want this to do some. I'm trying to be creative here. <laughs> so this will go to some, say, create reservation service. This one will call this one edit reservation service. And right now, it's just a simple API, so I don't necessarily need a whole service for it. But I'm doing this for in case of once I get to thinking about what these actual APIs do, then it might be helpful to have a separate service. Delete reservation service. All right, so you have the main part of the client makes a request to the web server, and the web server will call into a reservation API based on whatever the client wants to do with this create, edit, or delete. And from there, we have the point this down to some talk about the database. Um, let's say restaurant availability service. So it presents like a calendar huh. and then you can okay. select times from it. So let's say restaurant availability. And same thing also applies for edit because if they're going to edit, they want to see what else remains. Mm -hmm. so let me just do that. Imagine this points up to. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Um, maybe might be helpful to think about what the um, the page might look like, like what inputs you're going to take and what you're going to show the user. Because that might uh, like influence the calls you make to the APIs too. I don't know if you, if you don't think in that way, that's okay too. We can go to the database. But uh, just to, to like make sure yeah. you, you got the whole flow, it might be helpful to just, like what, what will the web page do? Is... Yeah. yeah, sure. Let me so apply that through. So let's say user story, basically. What would that mm -hmm. look like? Um, so let's say customer A makes request to see restaurant availability. That will so that will call the reservation API, create reservation service, response availability service. And for okay. inputs, so if they go on right now, they're anonymous users, so don't really need to provide any information. So mm -hmm. for now, I'll say this is empty. So they're just fetching to get the information. And then the output will be response from restaurant availability service containing say a date picker, date time picker. Date time picker to see availability. So in that respect, I, I would want to restructure this to say the reservation API can directly call the restaurant availability service. Because in the case where, let's say, the user is just doing some get requests and they just want to see what's available, they're not ready to create or edit or delete anything, then we should give them that ability. Let me move this over. And then this would just point to the restaurant availability service right here. So if we come here and say DB, so this would let me see, I want to add something in between here. So imagine I had some line from the res availability service that would call out to some API 
or some service between the database and itself to say check available reservations. Like this, yeah. And then if I add this here, yeah. From a from a user perspective, um, I guess um, just forgetting about any services or um, any yeah. APIs for a second. Um, I come to the websites and at some point I'm going to see a uh, date time picker. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the point that I see the date time picker, the date time picker doesn't know availability. It's just like, yeah. hey, select the date and time, right? Okay, cool. Yeah. So I select. Yeah. This right. only gets called for uh -huh. the when we get to the create. Reservation or the edit reservation service. It's just really yeah. hard to mock this off. But yeah, I'll probably talk through it more since it's hard to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at yeah. uh, the reservation or surround availability service, they call that API, that service gets called and it gives the user some date time picker that they can select times. If okay. a user or let's say a customer, if a customer hasn't gone through the flow where they're an existing person, where they, let's say they made a reservation already, they're probably if they select a date and time, which calls into the database to say yep. for this date and this time, index into the database and give me the results for what what's available and what isn't. So in oh, this I case, think... what we can okay. do if we select a date and a time. We can then just call the fetch availabilities and filter out all the times available for that date. So then okay. the user can just select from the filter times. Okay, cool. That makes sense. So we'll eventually show users on a date, like yeah, Friday. Exactly. Here's the times available, like 5 p.m., 5.30, 5.45, 7, yeah. like a gap, 7.30. Exactly. Like that. Okay, cool. That makes a lot of sense. And at the time where we're making that call, yeah. just knowing nothing about the user, are we able to know if, if it's available? Because like, what if I'm a party of eight versus a party of two? Yeah, so yeah, I guess I... Let me actually update the phrase. Actually, I didn't, yeah, I didn't name it date time. So that's why I sort of kept it a bit general when I said restaurant availability service. So let me put it into parentheses. So this is going to take into account the date time selected. It's going to take in the inputs I described on line on the bottom for curves. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so it's take it'll, do, it'll take the same. Exactly. Input. And that's what it's cool. going to filter the database on. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. And then it'll come back with a list of times. Yep. Uh, because if it's a party of two versus a party of eight, yep. probably different availabilities uh, based on the yep. shape of tables and the restaurant. Exactly. Okay. And for this cool. case, for an MVP, we can probably just go with a SQL database because this is fairly yep. relational data. So, yep. Exactly. Like, so cool. Yeah. So that's like the high level design. So, yep. we can the high level design makes sense. Do you want to talk about like how the data model might look? Yep. Uh, how you, how you yeah. store it, maybe? So, let me jump to that. So, let's say data model. So, let's see. So, I'm going to want some, let's say, table for. Reservation. And the reservation is going to have some ID, that's an integer, let's say not null, and this is essentially the primary key. And every reservation has a, I don't know what the term is for the person who makes a reservation, the reserver. I don't think that's a word, but yeah, it's I'll say owner, whoever made a reservation. And yeah, loop, yeah, yeah, I'll say customer. I'll say there's some customer table. Customer, I'll say this is customer. I'll fill that out later. The table for customer. And this will be like a foreign key into that table. Customer, and that's also not null because we're not going to support empty reservations without an actual customer to point to. So that can't be null. We're going to say table reservation size. So size, and that's also some int. What else is there? So every reservation you need to know ID is a customer, the size, the time. So the what would I just that? The start and end. Hundred percent like that. Yeah, I'll do start and end because in the case where someone edits a reservation, they might want to edit when you. Well, let's only start because I don't think there's any concept of restaurant saying you have to leave by this time. So uh -huh. I'll just say start time. Right. And yeah, yeah, customer would only get to the start time. Yeah, um, exactly. We'll have to assume some sort of end time, whether it's in this table or some other way. Like I think you had something about an average duration or something. Yeah. Up the top. So you'll have to have some sort of some metadata for like how you can calculate an end time, whether you put a table or not. It's up to you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'll support reservation time, and this is the date and the time uh -huh. for the reservation. So customer, the size, reservation, well, data or something. Data. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then a yep. table to know that. So name is just some. Um, <coughs> it's in some bar jar. Five. It's not null. Again, we don't want anyone. Add a name. Put the ID. Let me just copy this over. It's a name. Um, and you can use data. Data. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Phone number, cool. email, all of that. Um, yeah, exactly. So there's also we're gonna need a table for um, tables. <laughs> so we're gonna know need to know which tables have which side, and so that's how we can figure out current availability. So table four <laughs> can't do with that. It's just bad. Table, yeah, table, table, table. It's fine. <laughs> just so I just remember. So restaurant table again. Cool. ID, and we're gonna say size. Every table has a size. Mm -hmm. What else do I need to know about the table? Um, the when it's open. So I need to know how am I gonna rep represent that. Because when I was saying before about what we want to filter and return to the user for what they can select from, we need to know that given a certain time, is this table available during this time? So yep. what's the best way to keep track of that? Um, because the table can be occupied and free, occupied and free at different times throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially some array of times. I don't want to represent it as what's the best data type to use for that. Let's run table. I'm going to call out to another table that says, Hmm. I'll come back to this. I don't want to lose too much time, but let's say array of, of times, and I'll come back to explain what that means. Yeah. So the okay. main things are the customer, the restaurant table, the reservation, and uh, I mean, I'm, I don't. I need some concept for the restaurant itself. So what times it's open, what times it's closed, how many yeah. people are in there, because you can keep track of the max occupancy so far. 
There's mm -hmm. table for restaurant, and restaurant is going to have some mm, ID, especially when you have multiple sites. You want to know which restaurant. Because something I run into in San Francisco a lot, geographically, there can be two restaurants that are equidistant to me, but they're in different locations. So if I go yeah. to the, the website, I want to make sure I'm actually picking the right restaurant. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep. So ID, there's going to be some name, the restaurant, and then there are going to be customers. What else? There's available size or available capacity. That's going to get updated. And tables, so available tables. I think this is like the base for an MVP for the data model. Yeah, I think you mentioned some other metadata that might be useful in the restaurant one, but yeah. I mean, such as like um, average duration of stay. Like if yeah. this is an Applebee's, it might be like 45 minutes. It's a fancy steakhouse, it might be like two hours. Like yeah. who knows? Uh, so um, might want to put some of that metadata type stuff in there. It might matter. Cool. cool. All right, so that's the high level design with the data model and the API methods. So we okay. can sort of drill down now into some. What part would you want to focus on first? Yeah, good, good question. So at the bottom here, let's let's just start with um, let's pretend one of your services has like a function yeah. that's like get availabilities and it takes in uh, time. I'm just typing at the bottom of your uh, okay. of your sheet just so we can have some space for uh, yeah. pseudo code, not real code. Sure. Uh, take them like a uh, maybe like dates, um, size, party uh -huh. size. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Do you know? I think that might be all the unique. Well, maybe it's, like the restaurant, like maybe yeah. it's for this case, it's always the same one. Yeah. So same one, but and then it returns back some like. I guess we're saying like time slots, yeah, whatever that exactly. object looks like. Yeah. Um, so like not using real code or anything, but like yeah, describe like how this thing works with your data model. Okay. So forget availabilities. What we would do is we have the date and the size of the restaurant. So it's essentially our size the restaurant. So I guess I'll say first off, so I'd fetch restaurant. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. Then for mm -hmm. that restaurant, I'd fetch available dates. And then from there, I would fetch available times given size. So the first thing is we're going to filter to get, we're going to call the database and say, give me your results for this restaurant. So okay. find restaurant that matches input ID. And then yep. fetch available dates will say, for given restaurant, find available dates. Because I know some restaurants will give you dates up until, let's say, two weeks out. And some of them is only up to one week. So it really depends on what the restaurant has set up. So I just want to say, give me as far as you're willing to provide. So find those available yeah. days.